So welcome all. This is the Model T IAB program meeting, uh, one after a long period of no meetings or no organization. And uh, apologies for the hassle in sort of setting up the timing for this, uh, conflicting other meetings for, for some people. So we changed it at the last minute, but a good number of you are here. So that's great. Um, I thought the agenda would be four items. We should talk about the status of the program and discuss that and discuss the way forward. I think we should also go into the actual substance a little bit and discuss some, some drafts and reviews of those drafts or opinions on them. And then wrap up and decide how to, um, or what the next steps are. Any, um, any comments on this high level plan? Moving forward then, so uh, why don't I just do a, like a quick a rundown of, you know, a couple of things, what's been going on with the program or not be going on with the program and uh, then we can actually discuss. So try to bring the facts to the table. Uh, so the program was established after some discussions in Litter Workshop and SAG. In 2019, had some quite active discussions in 2019 and 2020. There's um, a fair number of documents uh, and quite lengthy, some of them, uh, including many that have been updated or uh, initiated this year, uh, multiple authors. Um, however, less discussions in uh, late 2020 to date, so for about a period of year, one year. Um, Largely, I, I think, or one major contributor that has been a, a leadership problem. And when I say leadership problem, I'm pointing to myself, um, not being able to organize meetings due to, to other things going on. Uh, and uh, people have criticized that and that's that's spot on. Um, it may not be the only issue, but that's you know, one, one major issue. So what should we do? Um, it, it would be useful also to discuss a little bit, like what, what has the group actually focused on? What kind kinds of things have been brought forward and um, papers written about them or, or discussed? So when I looked at the, this, I gathered that there's three categories of things. One is that we have these um, kind of like general observations about trends and types of attacks and issues that we see um, by, you know, I guess almost all of the authors involved in, 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 in this uh, effort have, have published something on this. Um, uh, Mark, sorry for, for the uh, typo on your, your draft names there. Um, one issue with this material is that it, it is it's very interesting and very relevant, uh, but it's sometimes hard to know when we're done. And how should it be published? So, so the question about being done is, is is a hard one when you talk about you know these are current attacks or examples of uh, specific problems. Um, you could make a list. It could even be complete, and then next day there's more. So how do we how do we deal with that? Um, also, I mean, I, I, I should state that I'm saying all of this as sort of my my personal opinion. Um, feel free to disagree but but I, I think it's also a little bit of a question mark how what would be the best way to publish these these kinds of things I don't know for instance if there's uh, similar academic surveys performed uh, or, or written that, that would be uh, worse or equal or better than than these um, yeah so I had some question marks there uh, then the second category of documents is uh, what I would call principles. These are kind of like a short statements about some um, some arrangement or some some way things should be or are. Um, there's some history of the IAB publishing some some RFCs on this, this um, type of format. Uh, for instance, the, the RFC RC 8558 is, is, is a good example, kind of like a 
it doesn't go into the protocol details. It, it, it states an issue and, and states a principle that, that one should follow in order to avoid some, some problems. And they're usually short and they don't have any sort of official IETF status, but uh, they, they attack a particular architecture issue and try to provide guidance. Best example of this is Martin's draft on uh, draft Thomson TMI uh, that talks about intermediaries. It's not the only one. I have a couple. Maybe the most uh, recent example is the data minimization principle. One um, not as worked out as, as uh, Martin's draft is, but still in the same category. And the third category is, is kind of like what this group started with is specific efforts to make suggestions to change the ITF guidance. As you remember, there's uh, the you know, way, way to write uh, ITF um, RFC security considerations uh, 3552 and talks about the, the Internet threat model in one of the uh, sections. And the question is, should that actually change? It kind of discourages thinking about endpoint security aspects too much because you can't do much. And uh, 3552 is not the only one. There's also 7258. Um, yeah, Th there's been some proposals on this. I, I would I would say that there was no agreement about these, like when are we ready to do this and, and are we ready? And there's also like this fundamental thing that we can't actually make that change. We can only propose a change for somebody else. So it's been a little bit... Um, uh, tough going. Um, certainly speaking, as a as an example author of some of those documents, uh, I didn't feel super motivated to push more because it felt like uh, you know it's not an easy way to reach the end goal and actually make a change. So, um, yeah. Program issues, uh, what do we have? Um, so we have obviously non-issues also. So, so clearly there's interest, there's uh, uh, no lack of contributions. Um, there's no lack of important problems to consider these things. I believe, I think many of you believe as well, or all of you perhaps that these are some of the biggest issues that we need to think about in terms of um, security and the, and the internet. Given that we've had such a great success in, in some other areas like communications. We do have some issues, so like our leaders was mentioned. Um, I've been sort of uh, in with you know 2020 hindsight, wondering about whether it was correct to frame the program around this 3552 update. Um, and also there's quite a lot in, in the discussion. So are we trying to tackle too much? Uh, it seems to be difficult to agree on the few things that we actually want to push out. And there's also some some IAB constraints. So, so I guess, or perhaps media could speak to this, but uh, in, in general, the IAB wants to have programs that, that actually produce input for, for the IAB to publish uh, documents on and not just have like a discussion club. So. And, and also it's important that the IAB participants, or IAB members are participating very actively. Not the only ones to participate, of course, but, but they, they should be active IAB members. Um, yeah, um, I, I may be jumping the kind of a little bit, um, maybe we should discuss the, uh, the situation, but well, there's a bunch of ways forward. We could declare failure, we could change leadership, we could rethink the goals. We could sort of find a better alignment with what IAB can actually publish, or some combination of these things, or or maybe some other things that you guys come up with. But why don't I um, stop here for a moment? I'll, I'll stop sharing so that I can actually see, you know, who's on the call and so on. Um, and um, we can discuss. Um, I think we're a small enough group that you can just uh, start speaking. If, if we get uh, people speaking on top of each other, then we'll do a queue. But we don't need to do that yet. Any thoughts? Well, good evening, uh, colleagues, friends, uh, 
Yari, thanks for organizing this. Um, this is Elliot. Um, from my perspective, the scope of this program was troublesome, has been troublesome. Um, in a way, we're on a uh, we're at the cusp of an entire new model of how endpoints uh, manage their own security, and people like Hank and Dave Taylor and um, the people in Rats and Suit and Eat have been working on finding that new way forward. Um, for, you know, in the IETF and elsewhere. And in a way, this, the real interesting stuff, to me at least, maybe everybody else has a different view of this, are the implications of that model, right? What does it mean to have uh, trust um, when you have multiple trust anchors, perhaps in various componentry? So the you know in Android you can have multiple personae, for instance. What does that mean in terms of end-to-end -end security? What does it mean when you have endpoints that don't necessarily have IP addresses that are in the device? Um, in terms of trust anchors and 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 just process endpoints. I mean, is where is the bounds? We started some of this conversation back when the program first began, but it it, it was this that was immediately ruled out of scope. And so, you know, if, if we're gonna do a 3552 update, I'd just say, you know, find whatever, create a working group and go do it, right? It's not, it, 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 it's something that we'll argue over as to what goes in and what doesn't go in. But if you really want, but the internet architecture board should be about a little bit more than that and should be looking into the future. And if not the internet architecture board, then who? Right? Should it be the IRTF? Where should that work go? Because right now a lot of it's in the IETF, and elsewhere it's in places like Google and Apple, right? And it's going to be elsewhere. So how do we? What what sort of model do we want for the future for all of that? Right? What do we want? What does good look like? I think these are all questions that we we should spend a little time on. Thank you. Thanks, Elliot. Can you um, jump on for just just one more second and? Do you have a, like a concise description of what would you like the scope to be, or was the answer broader? Yes, uh, uh, the, the the scope I would like to see would be new security models uh, for the for for end to end communication that involve uh, the, the the evolving trust models that are available to us in hardware and software, um, both through virtualization and through um, uh, evolutions in in chip design. I don't know if that's concise, by the way. Okay, uh, others. Uh, let's see here if I can make this work. Um, yeah, it's Mark. I um, uh, uh, like uh, like Elliot. Uh, thanks, Yari, for getting us together. Um, what I'm really hoping for out of today is some sort of route to closure. I think that there are really, you had three broad categories of activities that have gone on so far. I really think there's there's really two, and I'll explain that in a second. I, I think your middle category of principles is something that the IAB should think about publishing. Um, Martin's draft is is really interesting. I I, I think, I think principal drafts, principal in quotes, are a good thing for the IAP to publish. But for me, what went wrong here is that in RFC 3552, we have a document that is from 2003, and it, it, it's not even worth arguing about whether or not the threat model inside of that document is current. I don't think anyone would argue that it is. Um, but we, in Model T, we didn't have a way to transfer the work. I don't know if that makes sense, but it's we didn't have a mechanism by which the people who were energized by the Model T program could actually take their work. It was probably never going to be published by the IAB and find another home for it. Now, unlike Elliot, I think what should happen here is that 
I do think that we should go away and do something about 3552 and the related RFCs. Uh, I think we should divide the threat model from the guidance that we give to protocol designers and authors on how to write security consideration sections. I think those, those are, they're not orthogonal, but they're separate tracks for a protocol designer to think about. And I think finding a path to take those from Model T, because we have some work already there, uh, take those from, from Model T and transfer them somehow somewhere in the IETF should be part of the closure that we achieve for the program. So number one, the, the first track that I would suggest to us is a track that takes those principled drafts and makes a decision about whether or not, whether or not we can recommend to the IAB that the IAB consider publishing them. I think that's, that's one track. Uh, but the other track is then how do we transfer the other work? Uh, because I think there's very valuable work that's gone on uh, as part of Model T. You're right, all of the air left the balloon last year for a variety of reasons. But I don't. I think that if we re-energize that, um, uh, I think that that work would come back, especially if we could find a home that was perhaps not the IEB to do that work, right? And whether that's you know the general security area or uh, we went to set dispatch with the proposal, whatever it was, right? Some mechanism by which. Sorry, could you say that again? Some Sorry. mechanism by which we could um, achieve closure for Model T and yet get some deliverables and results that are valuable and based on the energy that that we had in the beginning. I, I think that's that's my take on it. And and the the division of the work streams I think is important to me as well. I think that. Uh, uh, documenting the threat model is a different task than providing guidance uh, to authors of security consideration sections. Thanks, Yari. Thank you. Uh, anybody else? Great UX. So um, I, I think I like the way that Mark's thinking here in terms of the two streams. Um, Although the, the division that you had there, Yari, was pretty helpful. Um, I, I do think that there's a set of things in this, in this bundle that you've identified that, that are clearly within the remit of the IAB and, and others that don't necessarily stay there. Now, I think the original intent with Model T was to, to incubate some of that work, sort of warm it up a little bit and try to get a little bit of momentum behind some of the, the, um, the concepts. And I, I think that Elliot's touched on one of the, the topics that's come up in, in that space, which is how, how endpoint uh, security has evolved in, into this sort of um, multifaceted, multi, multi-componentized thing that is no longer very easy to reason about um, in the very simple models that we had previously. But um, I suspect that we're going to need to be a little further along with the work that he referenced in suit and, and whatnot before we'll be confident in being able to say what the, the threat models are there. And I'm not involved closely enough to be able to say whether that's, that's where it is. Um, the principles document that you identified, I think um, I'd, I'd certainly be willing to, to do some more work on the one that I put together. Uh, I only recently saw the one that you put, on, put out on minimization. I don't know how I missed that. Um, it's, uh, it's also a useful thing to have, but uh, I don't know whether this is the right forum as it stands to have that discussion. I think there's a bunch of people here who don't necessarily want to have those conversations. And if we use this this group, this program to do that work, then I don't, I don't know if we, we have enough um, momentum behind it, but I'd, I'd like to see what other people say. Thanks. More thoughts? Uh, yeah, I seems to me it seems like we have up 
describing new threat models. There's discussion about um, updated guidance, both how to secure and also how to write security considerations. I think what I think is very important to get published in some form is updated threat model to get ITF people to understand that their device is not always 100% trusted. The other endpoint is not always 100% trusted and intermediaries is not 100% trusted. And you should you should consider that when you design your protocol. And if possible, you should try to avoid it. I don't think as a first step, just describing these threats in a good way. And maybe it might be harder to to give agree on on guidance exactly what to do but i think uh, publishing something doesn't need to update the, the old internet threat model that might be hard to do so yes another document that describes these new types of threats that we we see yeah, i think that would be a good first step in my view Thanks. Hey. Anyone else? Yeah. Um, Mallory here. I wanted to come off mute to say that I think that the current work maybe falls into two categories. Um, one is sort of more immediate things that I agree with Martin that IAB should be focusing on prioritizing. But then there's some of it um, that makes me agree with Elliot on the long term view. There's a lot of other places where this is being discussed. The issue is not going away um, without actually having run this idea by Colin, who's also on the call. It might make sense for it to be an IRTF research group, um, given the persistence of the issue and places where um, you know research that can also attract folks from outside the existing community to think about um, with the hope that it influences or at least inspires um, the working groups that have to grapple with these issues in the long term. I think when I look at the slate of work in front of us, I feel like that distinction might be helpful in moving some of the short term work forward um, while thinking there might be a place to put more of the long term stuff. Thanks. Thanks. That was helpful. Yeah, I, I guess I get to jump, jump in since Mallory summoned me. Um, uh, I mean, s some of these. Holding, we can't hear you. That's a. No, we can. No, we can. Very soft on that microphone dice. That's unfortunate. Um, yeah, I mean, as I was saying, some of this was originally proposed for IRTF groups, and, and it wasn't clear that what was being proposed at the time necessarily made sense there, which is what why at least some of the, you know, one of the reasons the work ended, ended up in the IAB. Um, I, I tend to agree with the people who've said that there are, you know, that, that there are updates to fairly uh, 5552, uh, and if, if we want to do that, that has to happen in the IETF. And there's clearly a lot of work which, which can come out of this and fit into an IETF group. Um, uh, and I agree that there are some principles drafts that, that make sense for the IEB to publish. Um, it's not clear to me what's left and how, how, that, how we can describe that crisply. Um, so I'm not sure I, I understand what the remaining pieces are well enough to know whether they would uh, possibly make sense for uh, the IRTF, whether they fit within some of the work that's going on in the IETF. Um, so I, I think if you know, I, I think there's some bits we can dispatch easily, and then there's a, a more difficult conversation to have about well, what what's left and where does it fit. Yeah, for, clearly for, for many problems, there is this like short term uh, actions to be taken. And then there's like this messy future thing. And, and if you're saying messy future thing is not for the IRTF, at least 
not in a not yeah, nicely yeah, it, it, uh, it needs to be more specific on that before it yeah. turns into a proposal yeah but perhaps you could work on that definition i i mean it, it i certainly agree with david and others that there is the future piece that um, is kind of looming above our heads and somebody should think about it yeah but but you know we, we can make a lot of progress by taking the bits where we understand what work needs to be done and where it should be done and sending it to those places so it can happen. And then, you know, that, that, then we know what's left at least. Yeah. Uh, further opinions and thoughts, lots of people on the call speak up. Um, I, I just wanted to point out that uh, some of the questions that we're asking here um, are things that are already being asked in the context of PPM, the, the new privacy preserving measurement working group um, that had a boff uh, at 112. Um, things like how do you design protocols and under the assumption that certain clients may be uh, malicious or acting against you? How do you design protocols when servers are also potentially malicious? Um, these are sort of natural things to ask in the context of, uh, like distributed systems and multi-party computation in general. Um, and I would expect, uh, the, this evolving threat model, um, whatever it happens to be, uh, to be sort of, uh, sharpened in the context of that working group, as we try to reason about, uh, the design of PPM and its, uh, relevant security properties. So, um. That is not to say that like PPM is the home for this particular discussion, but I think uh, it's it's a forcing function for us to uh, acknowledge that the internet is, or the, the threat model of like client server um, the trusted endpoints is um, perhaps no longer applicable to you know um, new work. So I, I would point folks there for a discussion or for perhaps um, you know more exploration of this topic. Good point, and of course, of course, PPM is is uh, is an important development and, and a very welcome one, and and it's sort of spot on this topic. Of course, it's only sort of a, a narrow sli slice of it, or for a particular purpose. More thoughts. Lawrence is has something to say. Okay, well, maybe I'll say my piece. Um, it was very brief. Um, what Chris said about PPM and what Elliot said about the the, the cluster of, of endpoint um, related work sort of makes me think that perhaps we're at one of those points where the evolution of the threat model happens piecewise and we have this work that goes on. No, I'm sorry, Florence, your mic is not working. Maybe you can try again. Um, yeah, there's a there's piecewise evolution that that needs to happen as we get further through the the work, say in in suit or PPM or or whatnot, and uh, trying to generate a grand unified theory for the, for the threat model is um, a little premature, perhaps. Uh, that, that's that may be that may be something for people to think about. Thank you. Uh, I'll observe that. Uh, yeah, I mean, at, at least from my perspective, some of these issues are sort of pressing problems in the internet today. So um, I think it's important that we do think about the, the problem um, because it, it, it's it's already present. It's not a future thing. Yeah, the question is what aspect of those things you 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 think is is necessary, and and do you need to fold it into a grand unified thing, or can can you just say? does this particular thing need a targeted um, set of solutions? And I think that's where we've sort of hit with the the, the principles drafts. It's, it's trying to just have that that one punchy little little tweak rather than, than try to get everything. 
Yeah, yeah, and I, I certainly agree with that. I, I'm not in favor of uh, grand unified theories for anything. Um, of course, the principal drafts are also sort of grand unified, but <laughs> looking at the very small angle of it, um, but they're not tied to a particular use case necessarily. So, um, yeah, I, I guess we are actually not agreeing. Uh, Florence, can you try again? You're not on the call right now. If I, I read this right. So maybe you are rejoining. I still don't see friends. Okay. Um, anybody else who wants to say something? Yeah, if I'll attempt to summarize a little bit, what I at least heard was that this, it, it, it feels like there's multiple uh, topics that are of interest, both the trust model evolution uh, and um, and then the, some of the principal things and other other documentation. Uh, and and some of that is, is perhaps doable as a uh, short-term thing that the IAB can take care of or, or at least some parts of the uh, 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 trust model, Fed model uh, evolution can could happen and at the IETF. But then there's these more fuzzy topics or like the everything that has to do with endpoints and and the sort of the uh, full theory of what, what is an endpoint and uh, how it's uh, how is it made up and what, what kind of components there and what what is the trust model and how it affects everything. That that seems a little bit too fuzzy at the moment to be classified as, as a thing that could be addressed by this research group or or, or this um, uh, activity, uh, whether it's ITF or or IAB. But may, maybe that's because we haven't really fully understood. We need to work on that. Uh, make sure that we actually have a crisper definition of that. So I'm, I'm not ruling out that that that's a thing that we could do. But but some of these other things seem easier to do. Does anybody disagree with this conclusion or summary? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, Yari. Um, yep. Slightly, I I would. What I would suggest, look, I I wouldn't want to split. The, you know, I, I wouldn't want to say, hey, hold up all this work for things that aren't there, as I, as I said in the chat, right? But I do think the board would be well advised to think about these things that are coming along, right? The idea that, that you know, we already have code in the field that handles these multiple trust models. It, it sort of doesn't do it well, in my opinion, but that's just my opinion. Um, we have tested code that demonstrates rats coming along. Right, we have this whole notion of you know the, the 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 some of this is intertwined. Right, we're aiming towards a world where cryptography is the norm, um, but we have components in that in in in, um, in in our architecture that aren't yet there, but need to get there. And so some of that is intertwined between you know with with trust anchor work and other things, and. See, I know that's a pretty broad area, right? It it needs to be well scoped. My suggestion is simply that uh, we or or the board or whoever, however you want to structure it, take some time to do that scoping, to do that scoping work. If if drafts are needed, maybe you know ask people to write drafts, right? Say, hey, do you have opinions here? Um, call in the community say, well, we're interested in this topic. If you're not interested in the topic, yeah, we'll go elsewhere. 
Yeah, and I didn't want to sort of ru rule out that uh, this this work on rats and, and, and similar things is, is, is not not relevant. I guess, I mean, I, I, I think those kinds of things that they actually referenced are, at least in my mind, more like solutions, confidential computing, trusted computing, um, rats and so on. And and that that is all well and proceeding and reasonably well understood, I, I would claim, and to some extent also fairly widely deployed, uh, not universally, but still. The, the question though is like, where do we go? You know, th there's a solution, and but then there's this definition of the trust model or, or threat model, and how do we how do we get to those from, from those technologies? Like, what what's the what's the missing clue or top top level picture? That that is less clear to me. Maybe that's the task to be to figure out. Yes, so I I just wanted um, actually Jim has his hands up, so I'm not sure if he also wanted to say something. But I'm going to say what I want to say now. Um, so uh, I, I agree. I think with everybody that there's definitely work. Like we're not done here. Um, there is there are open questions and there's things that we could write down and there's things that we need to discuss and things that need to evolve. Um, what's not clear to me is if the, this program is the right venue for it. Um, the idea also things that are in scope for the IAB and um, like these principal documents, and I believe there is interest in the IAB to work on these documents, but um, we don't necessarily need a program for that, right? You can also, any IAB member can bring in this work in the IAB and we have some discussion there. Programs are really valuable if we have a group of people who, who um, jointly contribute to these kind of documents and improve them and have some discussion about it. But it seems also that interest in these programs are very diverse and not necessarily only focused on on documenting these kind of principles. Um, so for me, the question is really: um, is is Model T as program still useful in any way? And it wasn't clear to me, or it isn't clear to me, if the answer is yes. So again, like even if if we end up closing this program, it doesn't mean the work is done. I mean, I I know that closing a program gives maybe a kind of a wrong sign, but this is definitely not the message. But it might not be the case that the IB, by providing such a program, can actually um, make any progress here. If I could jump in, jump in here now, I agree with uh, what Miriam just said. That if we close down this Model T exercise, that sends out a wrong signal, which I think will be very, very damaging in both the short term and the long term. And I think at the moment we seem to be talking around about issues about where's going to be the right forum in an ITS setting to do particular pieces of work. Should something be done by the IEB, should be done on a research group. Well, I think we should maybe sort of step back a little bit from that and look first of all about what we think the delivers really could be or are achievable. Prioritize them. And then think about how we would be the best vehicle for, to advance them forward. Uh, to take a very simple view about this, I would take a more pragmatic stance and say, well, just continue the discussions on this mailing list for now. And once we have reached, for some definition, we, we have reached some kind of agreement about what a particular solution might look like or what a particular document might be. And we then figure out where is the best place to steer that document through the ITF machinery. Maybe it goes to the IEB for them to consider and then publishes an IEB document. Maybe it gets chucked over the wall and Colin gets the job of having to figure out how to spin up a new research group. But I don't think we should concentrate too much in those aspects right, right now. I think we need to figure out what the, the achievable deliverables are going to be and try to come up with a rough idea of milestones about when we could reach those things and get those things done. And then once that particular piece, those particular pieces of work start to gel together, then we start to have a discussion about where best to shove them through the ITF machinery. Hope that helps. It does help, and I agree, of course, that uh, figuring out what achievable deliverables are and steps to get there is more important than necessarily talking too much about the forums and, and process. Can I reply to that point? 
Sure. Um, so my understanding was that Model T is exactly that, right? It was this venue to provide a mailing list and eventually some meetings to figure out what are the concrete things that we can then pursue in the IETF. And it just didn't happen over the last years. And that give, comes makes me to the confusion that maybe, you know, having an IV program might not be the right venue because we don't have the right people. Um, that's what we tried already. I, I, I agree and I said this myself that just closing the program um, tends to stop wrong signal. So I would be happy to have another um, plan for it. But just doing the same thing that we tried for the last three years doesn't seem like a good plan. Yeah, to be fair, though, the, the, the proposal on the table is to, doing also different things, not just attempting the initial goal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, perhaps some of the program material is just too ambitious. I mean, some of the talks we had before about overarching, overarching solutions, that gives me the heebie-jeebies and makes me want to run away screaming as quickly as possible. Um, so maybe we need to be a bit more modest and, and more accurate and uh, pragmatic about what our ambitions and targets should be. And I think another point I'd like to make is that I get the sense from Yari that Yari's been overwhelmed with other work and hardly surprising given what he does. So maybe another way forward might be to find somebody else who could cheer or, or assist Yari in the job of seeing this group and actually helping it to have maybe more regular meetings like the one we're having just now, or try to do a bit more arm twisting behind the scenes to get documents produced. Um, I think that might be another way forward, rather than hoping that Yari can somehow carve, carve something out of his infinite amounts of spare time to try and drive this group. I want to follow up on something that Miria said, um, and I, I was happy to hear her say that um, that we wouldn't close down Model T without an alternative way to get the work moving forward. But I agree with her on on the observation that what was sort of expected, and on the data tracker, there is an about statement with expected outcomes, right? Um, those expected outcomes either didn't happen or didn't happen in the way that people expected. And I, I really stress that as one of the things that might be really useful to do is to not sort, I, I don't want to say recharter, but to rethink what is possible here. And um, when I say what is possible, it's the two strands of work that I talked about originally. What is possible for the IAB to do and what is possible for this IAB program to transfer somewhere else so that that work gets done. Um, I, I think that's a very different conversation than the short-term, long-term conversation, which I think is also a valuable conversation to have, but a completely different one. If, if, if there was a gift that we could give to the IEB, it would be a roadmap for closure, right? It would be, we're going to do these things for the next six months achieve these goals, and then then we will be done, at least with this effort. Um, and that's kind of what I, I would hope would happen next, is sort of a, a rethinking of, based on what we know from the last year and a half or two years, here are the things we can do, here are the things that are achievable, let's document them and move on them. And for the other things that we need other people to do, Let's find a way to transfer that work out of an IAB program into somewhere else. I think that would be a constructive and positive outcome. Yeah, I, I, would, I would like to make one more remark about IAB programs. Um, so, you know, IAB programs, um, for some, to some extent, always kind of serve and support the IAB. Um, of course, these IAB programs are very um, useful for us to get in touch with the rest of the community, to have a discussion with the community, get input from the community, exchange thoughts. Um, but at the end, this is the, this is the characteristic of an IAB program. It's a program that supports the IAB. And um, and because there was probably little progress um, in the program and, and the discussion wasn't very focused, um, I think there has been also less, not in this topic, but in the program itself, there has been less interest by the IAB. So, um, so I, I'm happy if to, to take up this program and, and having some, and it doesn't have to be an IAB person who has to lead the program, that's not necessary. 
but there still has to be some IAB involvement. There still have to be people from the IAB who are active in this program and who also could take any outcome of this work and bring it then to the rest of the IAB if that is one of the intentions. So um, keep that in mind as well. Thanks. Um... Yeah, I'm wondering how to go forward. Uh, we have preserved one hour. Um, I, I, I think we have some sense of what the what the constraints are. There's interest for this piece and that piece, and, and a little bit of a more futuristic and less clear things also are, are interesting. Uh, Media has laid out well the sort of the uh, I guess constraints or. Uh, red lines from, from IAB perspective, how this needs to work. But perhaps we could indeed write this closure plan that we propose that these things, these three things are interesting and uh, this thing should go to the IETF uh, this way. And, and then it, it's like IETF's problem. And this thing is taken over by the IAB or, I mean, this is, deliverable to the IAB, IAB, IAB will publish it. And, and here's the way that we can actually do that. Maybe that involves rechartering Model C or creating a more focus group to provide feedback on the principal drafts, for instance, um, specific principal drafts and, um, and any other actions that, that might be needed. And, and maybe that would be a way out. And it would be clear. It wouldn't. We don't. Would not feel like this is termination. But this is like we're we're doing this, taking these things forward, and putting those other things over there. Of course, the the fussy topics are always difficult to deal with. How do we, how do we keep a discussion going on with them, and and where? I, I don't have an answer to that. But maybe that's no. Yeah, I, I guess Martin was saying earlier that we don't have to solve everything focus on the urgent things and specific concrete stuff that, that you can do and do incremental instead of current plan. Maybe that's a wise advice to, to follow. Mm. But I, I think this call has, at least for me, sort of hi highlighted a little bit better, like what, what, what are people's interests? So I wasn't clear, for instance, how much interest there is in, in these different pieces. I was uh, maybe a little bit surprised that there's a fair, fair bit of interest in actually documenting the, the, the actual model changes and, um, and, and taking that to the ITF. So, so that's good. Um, I wonder what to do with the rest of the call. Uh, we could perhaps briefly dive into the technical stuff. Um, I dislike it when, when we only discuss process and for, forums and IETF call. We should also discuss at least a few drafts. Um, yeah, so, so without wishing to bog it down with too much process, uh, if, if we are suggesting that some work goes to the IETF, we should maybe figure out a slightly more concrete plan for how to do that. Yes, we, we need, do need that plan, but that, that feels like a written thing that isn't available on this call. Oh, no, no. You know, it's, we can't do that live here. We, we, we maybe can't do it live, but we can possibly identify people to do it uh, to make sure it actually happens. Yeah, um, could we perhaps divide this, this work a little bit? So I, I'd be very interested in this principal stuff uh, and, and could perhaps write the plan for, for that together with, yeah, obvious um, co-conspirators, uh, Martin, perhaps, if you can help. Uh, and then the uh, threat model stuff, how would we, how would we do that? We need to write something. Um, any volunteers who want to do that? Uh, I Gary, I would volunteer to take that part of it, or, or at least um, lead a group that was interested. Um, and then you and I could coordinate on making sure that, you know, um, not just for I, the IAB, but for the participants in the community, that the two pieces of text looked similar so that you could understand them uh, and how we were addressing 
uh, the problem that we've sort of identified today. So yeah, I would be happy to volunteer to uh, to lead a group of people who are interested in talking about the threat model and what to do about it. For instance, I thought, uh, you know, as an example, um, I think Martin's comment about an incremental approach to the threat model is a really interesting one and one that I really hadn't thought of very seriously about, but I think deserves some attention. So, uh, yeah, I would be happy to step up and uh, and lead one one half of it or one part of it. Great, thank you. Can Perhaps I, you can draw. Yeah, can I? I just I just have a clarifying question because I had two things. Um, so I, I also heard that there's a lot of interest in working on the threat model, but it seems like some people still really want to mainly update um, 3552. You know, which would be like a short document and maybe just like a few paragraphs. And there seem to be other people who are um, rather want to work on like a more comprehensive, full, separate um, thread model. So I would just like to understand where people are. Uh, maybe that's a great question, but could I suggest that um, it needs a group of people to go away and and think about it to come up with an answer? Um, I think that's a very reasonable question. And I, actually, one of the benefits of having this hour together is that some people said some very sensible things about reconsidering 3552's threat model, right? There, there is one of the themes that we heard was we can't build this all encompassing model anymore, right? And then there was Martin's really interesting comment about using a, a more incremental approach to uh, identifying certain characteristics of the threat model. Right, and and I'll be honest in full disclosure, my my interest always was updating 3552. But one of the values of getting together today is I think now there's a group of people who should get together and and talk about what the right thing is to do. Uh, and and I'm 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 also influenced by Elliot's early comments in the call that there are short term things to think about and there are long term things to think about. And getting the right people together is going to be extremely important for the success of that. Yeah, perhaps you can can drive that and pull in Elliot and uh, Martin and maybe John also. He was also interested in the update, uh, and me me as well. And, uh, we'll await from for for a proposal, and and recognizing that there are issues. <laughs> Do we go for this tiny thing or this full blown thing or uh, what's the plan? Mm. Yeah, and now we are nearing the end of the hour. So, so maybe the right thing actually is to end here and and then go to the list for, for the discussion on the, on the detailed discussion of the drafts. Uh, it would be useful to get more reviews. Uh, I think uh, Martin's draft is, is really good. Um, it, it does need more eyes, though. So please, please go read that. Uh, for instance, not not to say that not, not to read the other ones either. But that one at least. And um, uh, one team will pursue this threat model proposal, uh, not not the content, but the, the yeah, process plan for it, and uh, one team will pursue the uh, the principal stuff, and um, and then we'll reconvene after a couple of weeks. Uh, hopefully, get some results before uh, the the uh, holidays. Amelia, does that sound reasonable, or does the EA, IAD want more? Uh, I, I can't speak for the IB. <laughs> I have to ask the IB. Um, I just I, I turned on my media because I wanted to channel um, Mallory saying that maybe we just have another interim focusing on these kind of topics. Um, but I think actually the, the kind of design team approach we are proposing makes totally sense just because like if you have a small group of like three to five people, then it's a different kind of discussion. Um, and then I think having having a, another interim in January or whatever to like um, present the results from these discussions would be very helpful. I think that's a great idea. And of course, it's always good to you know have something on paper be before having another meeting. So so let's set that as a goal that we actually have a proposal and then we can discuss or two proposals and then we can discuss in general. Good. 
then I thank you. The hour is full and uh, we had plenty of discussion and interested participation. So, so thank you for that. And I think we learned something. So that's, that's really good. Thanks a lot and uh, have a nice day or evening or night or whatever it is, day perhaps. Thanks, Yari. Bye. Bye-bye.